This is a continuation of the SCP series for this week. Enjoy. A Bad Composition SCP-012 Object Class Utilid Special Containment Procedures SCP-012 is to be kept in a darkened room at all times. If the object is exposed to light or seen by personnel using a light frequency other than infrared, remove personnel for mental health screening and immediate physical. Object is to be encased in an iron shielded box, suspended from the ceiling with a minimum clearance of 2.5 meters, 8 feet, from the floors, walls, and any openings. Description SCP-012 was retrieved by an archaeologist, K.M. Sandoval, during the excavation of a northern Italian tomb destroyed in a recent storm. The object, a piece of handwritten musical score entitled On Mount Golgotha, part of a larger set of sheet music appears to be incomplete. The red or black ink, first thought to be some form of berry or natural dye ink, was later found to be human blood from multiple subjects. The first personnel to locate the sheet, Site-19 Special Salvage, had two members descend into insanity, attempting to use their own blood to finish the composition, ultimately resulting in massive blood loss and internal trauma. Following initial investigations, multiple test subjects were allowed to access the score. In every case, the subject mutilated themselves in order to use their own blood to finish the piece, resulting in subsequent symptoms of psychosis and massive trauma. Those subjects who managed to finish a section of the piece immediately commit suicide, declaring the piece to be impossible to complete. Attempts to perform the music have resulted in a disagreeable cacophony with each instrumental part having no correlation or harmony with the other instruments. And this concludes SCP-012. Blue Lady Cigarettes SCP-013 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-013 are to be kept in a secure storage vault at Site-66. Exposed subjects are to be monitored for differences between their symptoms. Exposed subjects are to be interviewed daily and any changes in perception are to be logged. Description SCP-013 is the collective designation of 242 cigarettes which display similar anomalies. The most common external detail between instances is the presence of the words Blue Lady, handwritten on each cigarette in blue ink. Subjects who consume the content of SCP-013 through inhalation will begin to perceive themselves as a specified unidentified woman. Subjects have described the woman to be aged between 25 and 35 years old, standing approximately 1.6 meters tall with an estimated weight of between 50 and 55 kilograms. Additional reoccurring details include cropped dark hair, blue eyes and brilliant blue lipstick. Immediately after consuming an instance of SCP-013, subjects will gradually begin to perceive reflections of themselves as having the features of the woman, and will gradually perceive their bodies changing to reflect her appearance over the course of the following weeks. All changes are entirely mental. The subject's body does not change outwardly, only their perception of themselves. These alterations are permanent and cannot be reversed. SCP-013 was discovered after the suicide of Ian Miles, packed in a large cardboard crate in his apartment. A cursory search of the apartment uncovered several hundred sketches of a figure strongly resembling the one perceived while under SCP-013's effect. Miles' body had been found sitting at a desk, dead, of a massive overdose and draped over a handwritten note, transcribed below. During the investigation of Miles' apartment, one civilian investigator became affected by SCP-013's effect. An embedded agent soon contacted the nearest site. The subject, the artifact, and related evidence were extracted and contained. Currently, 217 instances of SCP-013 cigarettes are contained at Biosite 66. 25 SCP-013 cigarettes are contained at Research Sector 09, pending future research into similar anomalous effects. Addendum. Below is the note which was acquired along with SCP-013. I see her everywhere. That sad blue lady. I feel like I used to... Scratch that. I feel like I know her. 
but I can't remember. I love her, but I don't know why. She's so beautiful and sweet and clear, but I don't know anymore. Her favorite flavor. Where did you go? I miss you. And this concludes SCP-013. The Concrete Man SCP-014 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-014 is to be kept in sight data expunged in a chair with arms preferably facing a window Music should be supplied on a regular basis preferably constantly This music should not include pieces originating after 1937 a security camera should be present in SCP-014's room. Description SCP-014 is a Caucasian male, appearing to be approximately 30 years of age, with black hair, brown eyes, and a somewhat round face. Records indicate his name to be Robert Chetford, confined in 1915 to the Norwich Asylum in Connecticut for delusional insanity, claiming that he had been cursed to live forever and was slowly turning into concrete in consequence. The asylum closed in 1937, and the patients were transferred to various other facilities. SCP-014 came to the Foundation's attention in 19... Data expunged. From rumors of a patient who seemed to be entirely immobile and showed no signs of aging. Further investigation determined that acquisition was warranted. SCP-014 is, to all outward appearances, a normal man. But he does not appear to age, and shows no sign of possessing a metabolism. He does not eat drink, perspire, or in any other way demonstrate life functions. He breathes only to speak, and apart from his eyes and vocal apparatus, is to all appearances utterly immobile. He has never shown any evidence of pressure ulcers despite his position not having varied for several decades. Neither do his muscles appear atrophied. He can converse normally, but shows little knowledge of or interest in events since his confinement. Addendum Note Frankly, were I to interview this man without knowing his history, I'd think he was a perfectly sane and well-adjusted individual who happens to be quadriplegic. As it is, I have to conclude that he's the ultimate proof of the idea that the mind rules the body. He thinks he's concrete and will live forever, and so he's as close to both as he can be. Somehow. Dr. Data expunged. This concludes SCP-014. Pipe Nightmare SCP-015 Object Class Usulid Special Containment Procedures SCP-015 is impossible to move and is contained on site. A gap of at least 2 meters 6 foot needs to be maintained around the entire structure containing SCP-015 at all times and no structures of any kind are to make contact with SCP-015's current containment structure. Exploration is permissible, but only in teams of three, with full safety lines and GPS tracking. Any protrusions from SCP-015 must be capped and sealed immediately with the new site recorded and logged. No aggressive action is to be made within SCP-015, no hand or power tools are allowed anywhere inside SCP-015, no repairs or maintenance are to be made anywhere on SCP-015. Description SCP-015 is a mass of pipes, vents, boilers, and other various plumbing apparatuses completely filling a warehouse in Data Expunge. The pipes appear to grow when not under observation, attempting to connect to nearby structures via sewer systems and underground plumbing. SCP-015 contains, at current estimate, over 190 kilometers 120 miles, of pipes, ranging in diameter from 2.5 centimeters to over 1 meter. Some pipes appear new, while others are rusted and leaking. Pipes have been reported as being made of bone, wood, steel, pressed ash, human flesh, glass, and granite. No pipes composed of lead, PVC, plastic, copper, or any other traditional material for the production of pipes have been found. SCP reacts to tools and aggression. Any personnel acting violently carrying tools or attempting to damage or repair SCP-015 in any way will trigger a reaction. Any pipes near the subject will burst, spraying on the subject for several seconds before the flow suddenly stops. 
Pipes have been reported containing oil, mercury, rats, a species of insects not yet identified, ground glass, seawater, entrails, and molten iron. Pipes will continue to burst around the subject until death or retreat. SCP-015 was cut back to its current structure after attaching to 11 other structures in the area. Currently, 11 personnel have been killed, and 20 more are still missing. Reports have been made of banging and screaming coming from within SCP-015. And this concludes SCP-015. Sentient Microorganism SCP-016 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-016 is to remain within the confines of a 5x5x5 meter room at all times. Maintained at a temperature not to exceed 0 degrees Celsius. SCP-016 itself is to remain in the petri dish in the containment cube at all times unless directed otherwise by level 4 or 05 personnel. Full documentation of experimentation with SCP-016 must be submitted before and after samples and duplicates of SCP-016 may be taken. Failure to follow these procedures will result in termination or reassignment as Class D personnel. Only authorized personnel may be permitted to obtain samples of and experiment with SCP-016 under BCL-5 containment conditions. If an outbreak does occur, despite following the aforementioned procedures, Directive-based personnel are to implement a Code Sigma lockdown and containment plan. Infected personnel are to be terminated on site by security forces wearing standard mission oriented protective posture (MOPP), anti-biological and anti-chemical equipment. Should the infection not be contained after 48 hours, the on-site nuclear device is to be detonated. Remaining personnel are not to be evacuated under any circumstances. SCP-016 has been shown to survive for up to 6 hours in blood and up to several minutes in air. High intensity ultraviolet light and high concentrations of chlorine bleach have been demonstrated to be effective in sterilizing non-organic material. Description: SCP-016 is a blood-borne pathogen recovered from a mine worker in Data Expunged, who injured himself while working in a deep coal seam. Said wound became contaminated with coal dust from the mine possibly infecting the worker with dormant spores. Over the next several days, SCP-016 proceeded to infect the remaining employees at the mining camp, as well as the CDC crisis team dispatched to deal with the epidemic. Foundation personnel then took over the investigation and terminated all affected personnel. Patient Zero was brought into captivity and the mine shaft was collapsed by explosive device. SCP-016 has an incubation period ranging from 24 hours to 2 years depending on the presence and number of the human hosts in the area. First symptoms resemble the common cold, and include itchy eyes, running nose, coughing, and bodily aches. Phase 2 begins in 48 hours, and consists of a controlled form of hemorrhagic fever, as the organism causes a small amount of blood to become aspirated in the lungs, creating an aerosol effect. During Phase 3, the host crashes and bleeds out, bleeding profusely from every bodily orifice, including the nose, tear ducts, anus, skin pores, mouth, urethra, and, in case of females, vagina. Blood pressure skyrockets during the final stage. Hosts have been observed projectile vomiting blood to distances over 5 meters. Should the host survive this near total sanguination, the pathogen will become dormant once more, returning to incubation phase. What distinguishes SCP-016 from other strains of hemorrhagic fever, such as Ebola and Marburg, is its unusual response to high stress. Should the subject undergo a high stress situation such as a life-threatening crisis, the organism will change its survival tactic from rapid reproduction to the rewriting of the host's DNA and begin the simulation of rapid cell division. Major physiological changes occur within the first 24 hours with complete bodily reconstruction occurring within two weeks' time. Most hosts do not survive the process due to the heavy demands made on the body. An interesting side effect of the transformation is an increased aggressive urge. It is believed that this may be an attempt to maximize the spread of the virus in a manner similar to rabies. On another note, subjects who undergo bodily transformation no longer appear to exhibit SCP-016's hemorrhagic properties. However, subjects infected by transformed hosts will still undergo the normal SCP-016 infection process. 
Addendum Experiment log of SCP-016's transformative properties Subject D-0161 D-Class personnel infected by SCP-016 Upon first showing symptoms, subject's quarters were slowly flooded with water over a 24-hour period. SCP-016 mutated into a teratomorphic state, transforming subject's lungs into gills. Subject survived for two more weeks as SCP-016 transformed its limbs into fins, caused its eyes to atrophy, and enhanced its sense of hearing into a cetacean-type echolocation ability. Subject was terminated by draining all water from its quarters, causing it to asphyxiate. Body was subsequently cremated without autopsy. Subject D-0162 D-Class personnel infected by SCP-016 Upon first showing symptoms, subject's quarters were slowly flooded with water over a 24-hour period. SCP-016 mutated into a tetramorphic state, causing subject to undergo rapid muscular growth and increased bone growth on knuckles. Subject then attempted to escape from confinement by punching through the reinforced steel door. Subject was not successful and died by drowning. Note, same situation, two different responses. Interesting. Dr. Dardarek Sponge. Three more cases. Subject D-0163. D-Class personnel infected by SCP-016. Subject was previously a chemical engineer who poisoned his wife upon discovering her adultery. Upon first showing symptoms, Subject's quarters were slowly flooded with water over a 24-hour period. SCP-016 mutated into a tetramorphic state, causing Subject to grow an unusual organ on his chest, consisting of a chamber and two separate tubes. The organ continued to take in water and swell in size, until Foundation personnel, realizing what SCP-016 may be attempting, terminated the subject by gunshot. Organ was found to contain several gas sacs filled with acetylene gas and oxygen. Subject D-0164 D-Class personnel infected by SCP-016 Subject was told to concentrate on forming wings. No stress was applied. SCP-016 did not mutate into a teratomorphic state. Subject died of sanguination during Phase 3. Subject D-0165 D-Class personnel infected by SCP-016 Subject was told to concentrate on forming wings and placed in an acrylic box suspended 305 meters 1, feet, above a mineshaft. A timer was placed outside the box, which subject was told indicated the time to release. SCP-016 mutated into a teratomorphic state, causing subject to grow a tentacle-like organ on his left wrist, similar to a spider's spinnerets. Subject extended said organ through one of the box's air holes and extruded a strong, silk-like substance which it then used to secure the box to the cable. Subject was terminated when the countdown reached zero and the bomb detonated. This concludes SCP-016. Stay tuned for our next SCP episode, which will be ready for your lovely ears tomorrow. And if you fantastic listeners get a chance, a subscribe on your platform or an iTunes review goes a long way. And thanks again for simply listening. And I'll see you next episode.